Hello, English learners. This is Mr. Clendenning. Today, I'm going to talk to you and give you some tips for preparing for the access test, which you're taking, and I know you're really excited about. So, let's get going. First of all, what is it? It's a state-mandated test for all English learners. That means you do have to take it. Sorry. Uh, what is an English learner? That means somebody that has been born into a family where English is not the main language spoken at home. Um, or at least it wasn't. Uh, therefore, you are in, at a disadvantage because you're not surrounded by all that vocabulary and natural English uh, speaking environment. At the same time, you're at an advantage because you can speak another language and that is pretty darn cool. Um, it will give you an overall score from one to five. One is somebody like doesn't know anything and five is somebody that can be successful in high school um, without much help. Okay. And the, the scores in between there, as you can imagine, uh, range. Okay. It's four parts. There's listening, reading, writing, and speaking. It takes about three hours total. Uh, why does it matter? First of all, it's for you. You will be able to measure and see your own growth. And that is cool when you can look back and say, man, I did it. And when you become, I, I'm telling you this test, parts of it are easy, but to pass out is, or to pass the test completely and do really well is not easy. So when you do that, you will feel accomplished. Okay. All right. You will discover your own personal growth in areas of listening and reading, writing and speaking. It will give you a specific score for each of those, which will say, hey, you need to work on your speaking skills or, hey, you're doing great with speaking, but you need help with your listening or reading. Okay, going on. What is the schedule today? You start at 745 and you're going to do the listening and reading test until they're done. Um, throughout the day, um, you, if you have resource today, you will also take your speaking test today. If you do not have resource today, then you won't be taking your speaking test today. Tomorrow, otherwise, 7.45 a.m., you're back again. You're ready to go. You're going to get some sleep tonight. Make sure you get some breakfast tomorrow. And you're going to take your writing test until you're done. It might take about an hour. Um, and then throughout the day tomorrow, if you have resource, that's when you will finish up, or I should say do the speaking test if you haven't already. So see your proctor if you're not sure when to take your speaking test. I do have a detailed schedule, but it's basically you're doing uh, the listening and reading test this morning, and then tomorrow morning is a writing test, and then the speaking test is whenever you have resource, okay? You will miss probably second hour today, maybe some of fourth, and you might miss all of first tomorrow, at least some of it, okay? All right, what can you do to prepare? Make sure you get lots of rest. So if you're watching this video uh, tonight yet, um, make sure you get lots of rest, make sure you get breakfast. You need to have a good attitude like, hey, I want to do well on this test. If you don't try it all, you're not, you're definitely going to fail it. And if you fail a test, well, you're going to be taking it next year and the year after that. I want you to not be labeled as an English learner anymore. I want you to feel proud about yourself to say, hey, I got this. Um, you can also do the practice tests on the law on the Chromebook. You can log out. Bottom left is you hit the apps button, click on DRC Insights, then WIDA, and then you can do the practice test without needing a code or anything. To do the actual test, you will need the code like I'll give you tomorrow. Okay. Next is the reading test. You to help you out with your reading test, you could I suggest make a vocabulary notebook, write down every single word and take it to every single class, write down every single word that you don't know. Um, and then later visit those words and try to define them, use them in sentences. Why? For your benefit. Okay. Vocabulary is the single most important key to becoming a better reader. And then always focus on the main idea. What is what you're reading about? What is the point? Good readers ask questions about what they are reading at all times. Okay, here's some other uh, tips. So you have this presentation, I shared it with you, and you can follow that link for the video, but it goes over these tips. Read more often. That should be a duh statement. Choose what you read carefully. Instead of reading comic books, read novels, his history. Um, read the same thing over again. There's a lot of value 
to um, reading something twice. The first time you read it, you're trying to figure it out. And then after that, it's a matter of um, really understanding it and getting all you can out of it. Don't get stuck. So if you don't understand thing, something, go on. Read out loud to your family or your friends or maybe make a video of yourself reading. Read out loud to your teacher. And finally, test yourself to ask questions as you read. All right. I'm going to go over a little more in detail how to be successful on the writing. First of all, there's two major portions. There's an essay and there's a, a letter. So for the essay, the best is five paragraphs. And there will be three paragraphs of points to support one big idea. Okay, and then there's a conclusion. So the first paragraph, you're going to start off, introduce the topic, state your big points. Okay, the second paragraph is going to be one reason why your big point is true. So first sentence states the reason your main point is true, and the rest of the paragraph explains that one point of why your first paragraph point was true. You're going to do that with the next paragraph and the paragraph after that. Finally, you're going to restate your main points. So, for example, this is what it might look like. The first paragraph would be an introduction to Abraham Lincoln and a statement at the end of the paragraph stating he was the best president to have lived for three reasons. The second paragraph might be started off with he was the best president because he helped end slavery. And then you use three to four sentences to explain what he did to help end slavery. The third paragraph, he's the best president because he kept the United States together. And then you use three to four sentences explaining how he did that. Fourth paragraph, he was the best president because of his speeches. He talked about Gettysburg Address and his inaugural addresses and how they're important and how people interpreted and listened to them and how we see them today. Finally, the last paragraph, restate your main points in a new way in summary. Okay? So that'd be five separate paragraphs. If anything, try to at least write in paragraphs to separate your ideas. You'll also be asked to write a letter, and it's usually to the principal. So you would start off by saying, Dear Mr. Clendenning, or our Wausau East High School principal is Dr. Peck. Okay? P-E-C-K, Dr. Peck. Make sure you capitalize our names and our titles. And you start that off by saying, Dear Dr. Peck, or Dear Mr. Clendenning, and the first paragraph should tell you what the purpose of the letter or why you're writing the letter. The second paragraph gives lots of details to support whatever you're trying to prove, whether there be no, that should cell phones should be allowed or you need to do a better job of bullying, whatever it is that the assignment is asking you to do. But give lots of details in that second paragraph, okay? And the third paragraph kind of says what you just said in a new way. So as I put at the top, I always think in the rule of three, introduction, body, and conclusion. And that goes for any writing. You need to start off with a point, give some support why it's true, and tell me again why it's true in a different way. Okay? So the last paragraph just confirms what I said. And then make sure at the bottom, since you probably don't write many uh, letters, to write sincerely, comma, and then your name. Okay? When you're done writing either the essay or the letter, make sure you do cops. So watch for capital letters. The letter I is a word. I, make sure you capitalize it. Names, Wausau, John, um, titles of books or movies. Make sure you capitalize them. Titles like Dr. Peck, DR needs to be capitalized. Order an organization. Read back through it and say, does this make sense? If it doesn't make sense, make some changes. Next, punctuation. Make sure you put a period at the end of your sentence as please. You're going to drive me bonkers. Put a period at the end. Or at least use an exclamation point or a question mark. Every sentence has to end with one of those. Inside or in the middle of sentences, they can have commas or quotation marks. Finally, check for spelling. Make sure you're using the right word. You know, the, the theirs and pairs and all those words that have similar spelling but have different meanings. Make sure you're using the right word. Do your best to spell words correctly. Finally is the speaking test. Almost there. Speak loudly and clearly, just like I am doing now, all right? There will be about five of you in the room. You'll have headsets. You won't really hear the other people much because it's a pretty large room. But you are going to automatically fail if your voice is unclear or soft. So give it your best chance and speak loudly and clearly, all right? Um, often students get the lowest score in this test because they don't speak clearly and loudly and also they don't use school words so use the biggest words that you can use correctly okay 
Um, so that's called academic language or like school words. Think about the more advanced words that you know and try to use them in addition to using words correctly. So that is my tips for today. I wish you the very best and have a good attitude about it. Get some sleep. I hope you got some breakfast in your belly and uh, you got this. All right.